Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over a problem involving combination circuits. And in this case, we're going to have two resistors in series. And those two resistors that are in series are going to be parallel with a third resistor. This is the circuit diagram that we're going to use. You can see we have R1 and R2 are in series with each other. And those two are in parallel with R3. It doesn't matter whether the series ones are in this branch or in this branch. The problem would be the same. The answer would be the same. In this case, I just do the two series one on the left-hand side. But I could have easily put one and two over here and R3 in this branch. It would not matter. We have a single voltage source, 5 volts. Now, we're going to try and do a bunch of stuff. We're going to go step by step. We're going to write everything down, write our equations down, check our answers, units, think about our thinking. And we are going to try to do five things. We are going to try to get the total equivalent voltage, the total voltage in the circuit. That's pretty easy. Then we're going to get the equivalent resistance. Then we're going to get the total current. Then after we've done the first three things, I like to call these first three things, the big three, then we can get the total current through each resistor, excuse me, the individual current through each resistor and the individual voltage drop across each of those resistors. That is five things. We're going to try to do this in 10 minutes or less. Let's get started. The total voltage. Now the total voltage gain is pretty straightforward. We only have one voltage source. So the total voltage gain is five volts. I just like to write that down, have my students write it down so that they know the voltage is five volts. Okay, now the equivalent resistance. We have resistors in series and we have resistors in parallel and therefore we call this a combination circuit. The first thing we have to do, this is a two-step process to get the total equivalent resistance. We could do it in one step, but I like to break it down in two steps. The first thing we need to do is get the equivalent resistance for the resistors in series. That's pretty easy. We know that in order to get the equivalent resistance for resistors in series, we just add up the resistances R1 plus R2, which is five plus nine, and that gives us that equivalent resistance of resistor number one and resistor number two is 14 ohms. Now, just to remind myself, okay, I might actually draw in, look at that, a nice equivalent resistor. And I might even write down up here somewhere um, that the equivalent resistance of those two resistors, R1 and R2, is 14 ohms. Okay, I'm not getting rid of this resistor. I'm not getting rid of this resistor. I just need, I just know that in order to get my total current, I have to get my equivalent resistance first. And I'm going to, in order to do that, I have to get the equivalent resistance of one and two, which is 14 ohms. And now you can see I have a single resistor, my single equivalent resistor in parallel with a single resistor over here. And now I can use the equation that I use to get the equivalent resistance for parallel resistors and this is the equation, one over the equivalent resistance. Now we're gonna get the total. This will end up being the total for the entire circuit. The total, the equivalent resistance is one over RT, one over the total, is equal to one over the equivalent resistance of one and two, plus the resistance, one over the resistance of R3. Plug my numbers in, one over the total resistance, one over the equivalent resistance is one over 14 plus one over 10. 1 over the total resistance is equal to, if I put this in my calculator, 1 divided by 14 plus 1 divided by 10, I get 0.171. That's not the equivalent resistance, that's 1 over. So i got to take the reciprocal of both sides, which means that RT is going to be equal to the total resistance, the equivalent resistance of this circuit is 5.83 ohms. How I get 5.83? Well, if I flip this side over, I get RT over 1. But if I flip this side over, take the reciprocal, I get 1 over 1.71. So in my calculator, I did 1 divided by 0.171, and I get that the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit, for all three resistors, is 5.83 ohms. I can take this resistor out, I can take this resistor out, this resistor out, and I can replace them with 1, and that will end up with the same current as if I had those three in there. Well, what would that current be? The total current, if we're going to use Ohm's law v equals I times R, we want to find the total current. I put down here I total. So I remember I have to use V total and R total. Now that might be obvious, but I just like to write those things down. Remember the total voltage was five, the total resistance, my equivalent resistance was 5.83. I don't use, you know, one of these five, nine, or 10. I have to use the total resistance. So that's why I like to put IT, VT, and RT. That is five volts divided by 5.83, the total current, the current coming out of the battery, not through the branches, but the current coming out of the battery is 0.68 amps, all right? So now I did the voltage, I did the resistance, and I did the current, and now we can go on to the next step. Okay, and you can see I wrote down here also, I carried over all my information. 
my total voltage, my total resistance, my total current, and my total equivalent resistance, because maybe I'm going to have to use that. Well, let's get the current through each resistor. Well, we are going to use V equals I times R. All right, that is Ohm's law. Now, we're going to solve that for I, because we want to get the current. Now, we can get the current through this entire branch. We know the current through 1 and the current through 2, because those two are in series, you should know by now that the current is the same through those two resistors, right? Whatever comes in comes in here has to flow through R1, has to flow through R2, and has to then leave that branch. Okay, so we're going to put down that the current through 1 and 2, because we know the currents are the same, is equal to the voltage across 1 and 2 and the resistance of 1 and 2. All right, now this is how this works. The current through 1 and 2 is the voltage across 1 and 2. What's the voltage across 1 and 2? Well, these two resistors are in parallel with this battery. Therefore, the voltage across 1 and 2 is 5 volts. It's not the voltage across 1 and the voltage across 2. It's the voltage across the entire branch, which is where the current is for the entire branch. So I use the voltage across the entire branch, because it's 1 and 2, and the resistance of 1 and 2, which means I have to use the equivalent resistance. I, didn't use, I don't use the resistance of 1 or the resistance of 2. I don't do them individually and then add them up. If I'm going to do I1, 2, the current through 1 and 2, I have to use the voltage across 1, 2, and the resistance across 1, 2, or the, excuse me, the equivalent resistance of 1 and 2, and that tells me that that current is 0 0.36 amps, 0 0.36 amps. Now, I could just subtract 8.6, no, 0.86 minus 0.36, and that would give me the current through this third branch, which is 0.5. But let's just check it, okay? So we have the current through 3. This is the voltage across 3 and the resistance of 3. Well, the voltage across 3 is 5 because this branch, this resistor, is connected to this battery in parallel. So the voltage drop across this resistor is going to be equal to the voltage gain of the battery, just like the voltage drop across this branch is equal to the voltage gain of the battery. Well, if the voltage drop across that is 5 and the resistance is 10, then that means that the current is 0.5. And we got that by calculating using Ohm's law, but it's the same answer we got because we know the total current is 0 0.86. 0 0.36 goes through this branch. That means the remainder, 0 0.5. And we got the same answer doing that two different ways, whether with subtraction or with Ohm's law. We got the same answer because those two currents, 0 0.36 and 0 0.5, have to add up to 0 0.86. They do, and we're pretty sure, therefore, that we got the right answer. Okay, that's the current through each branch. Now we can get the voltage drop across each branch. And once again, we're going to use uh, Ohm's law. Now, let's do the easy one first. The voltage drop, we said in the previous slide, we have a single resistor. That single resistor, R3, is connected in parallel to the battery. So the voltage drop across 3 has to be equal to the full total voltage drop, which is the voltage across the battery, and therefore that has to be 5 volts. So voltage drop across number three is five volts. Now, in order to get the voltage drop across one and two, we're going to have to use Ohm's law. We're going to have to calculate, all right? So you can see for the voltage drop across number one, we have to use the current through number one and the resistance of one, all right? That means the voltage drop is 0.36 because that's the current through number one happens to be the same as the current through number two, but that is the current through resistor number one. 0.36 times five, and you get 1.8 volts. So 1.8 volts is used across resistor number one. Now, once again, we could subtract five volts because we know the voltage across the entire branch is five volts. Well, 1.8 is used across resistor number one, so the remainder 3.2 is gonna be used across resistor number two, but let's just use our calculations and our Ohm's law and see if we get the same answer. So V2 is equal to I2 times R2. Well, V2 is therefore equal to I2, which is the same as I1 because the current is the same across the entire branch. So we get 0 0.36 amps, and we times that times the resistance of that resistor R2, which is 9 ohms, 
and we get 3.2 volts. Okay, that's the same answer we got using the subtraction which we mentioned earlier. And we can check, just to be sure, that we know that the voltage drop across the entire branch has to be 5. It's 1.8 across V1, it's 3.2 across V2, excuse me, R2, and therefore that entire thing is 5 volts. That's the voltage drop across the branch. We know it has to be 5 volts because that branch is connected to that battery in parallel. Okay, so that's the end of the problem. Okay, we did a lot of stuff. We did all the steps. First we found the total voltage, then we found the total resistance, then we found the total current, then we found the current through each branch, and then we found, or through each resistor, and then we found the voltage drop across each resistor. Okay, that's a lot of steps. It's very good if you write everything down, go step by step, think about your thinking, write down the equations, plug the values in, get the correct units, label everything, use the correct currents, use the correct voltages, use the correct resistors. And I think if you do that carefully, you can be successful and solve those problems. Also, step by step, think about your thinking. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed that video, you can give me a thumbs up or a comment in the comment section below, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you.